ever wondered how the idea of time travel in the Back to the Future series was born? Well, let's delve into the creation of one of the most iconic symbols of cinematic time travel, the DeLorean Time Machine. The very concept of the DeLorean Time Machine is as intriguing as the film itself. But did you know that this flashy sports car wasn't the first choice for time travel in the series? The creators Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale had initially dreamt up a refrigerator as the time machine. Picture that for a moment. Marty McFly, instead of jumping into a sleek automobile, climbing into a fridge to zip through time. So why was the idea of a refrigerator abandoned? Well, the creators were worried that children in their innocence and excitement might start climbing into refrigerators, imitating their favorite character. The thought of risking children's safety was enough to steer them away from this idea. Thus, the DeLorean was born out of necessity and practicality. A car they thought was a more logical and safer choice. Plus, it added a dose of style and charm, didn't it? But what's a time machine without a mechanism to make time travel possible? Enter the flux capacitor. This Y-shaped device located in the back of the DeLorean is the heart of the time machine. Interestingly, the idea for the flux capacitor was conceived after Doc Brown, the eccentric inventor in the series, slipped and hit his head while standing on his toilet fixing a clock. This strange incident led to a eureka moment, and the flux capacitor was born, making time travel a reality in the world of Back to the Future. So there you have it the birth of the DeLorean time machine. A blend of necessity, safety, charm, and a dash of eccentricity. Imagine if Marty McFly had to hop into a fridge to travel through time. Quite a chilling thought, isn't it? Could you believe that the hoverboard Marty uses in the second film doesn't actually hover? A shocking revelation, isn't it? But the magic of cinema makes the impossible possible, and this is no exception. Let's delve into the creation of the iconic hoverboard scene. The filmmakers used a concoction of innovative techniques to make us believe that Marty McFly was indeed floating on a futuristic skateboard. The hoverboard was actually attached to wires and cranes, which were later digitally removed in post-production. This created the illusion of a floating skateboard, and the result was nothing short of spectacular. The hoverboard scene was so convincingly done that it sparked a wave of excitement and curiosity among viewers. People were in awe of the technology and couldn't help but wonder if hoverboards were the next big thing in personal transportation. This fascination led to a frenzy of rumors and speculations. One such rumor that caught the public's imagination was the conspiracy theory about real hoverboards being suppressed by the government. It was suggested that the government had access to this technology but was withholding it from the public due to safety concerns. As far-fetched as it sounds, this theory added another layer of intrigue to the hoverboard phenomenon. The hoverboard scene transcended the boundaries of the silver screen and became a cultural phenomenon. It represented the boundless possibilities of the future and inspired many to dream big. And while the hoverboard was just a product of movie magic back then, it has since become a reality. Today we have self-balancing scooters commonly referred to as hoverboards. Although they may not exactly match the floating capabilities of Marty's hoverboard, they're a testament to how far we've come in terms of technology and innovation. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll see hoverboards that truly defy gravity, just like in the movie. Until then, we can only dream and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Hoverboards may not have been real in the 80s, but they're certainly a reality today. Did you know that Michael J. Fox wasn't the first choice for Marty McFly? Yes, you heard that right. The time-traveling guitar-strumming teenager that we all know and love was almost portrayed by a completely different actor. Enter Eric Stoltz, a young up-and-comer who was initially cast in the iconic role. The casting process for Back to the Future was far from straightforward. Directors were looking for someone who could bring a certain charm and charisma to the character of Marty McFly. After a long search, they settled on Stoltz, believing he had what it took to bring Marty to life. However, as they say, the best laid plans often go awry. After five weeks of shooting, it became clear that something wasn't clicking. Despite Stoltz's undeniable talent, the directors felt that his interpretation of the character was too serious, lacking the lighthearted and comedic touch that the script demanded. So a difficult decision was made. Eric Stoltz was replaced and the search for the perfect Marty McFly began anew. 
This is where Michael J. Fox enters the picture. Known for his role in the hit TV show Family Ties, Fox had initially been the director's first choice. However, due to scheduling conflicts with the show, he had been unable to commit. Fortunately, with the sudden need for recasting, the stars aligned, and Fox was able to step into Marty's shoes. Fox brought a fresh energy to the set, infusing the character with a wit and charm that resonated with audiences. His portrayal of Marty McFly became so iconic that it's hard to imagine anyone else in the role. This last-minute casting change, while initially a setback, turned out to be a blessing in disguise for the film. So there you have it, the story of the role that almost wasn't. It's fascinating to think of how different Back to the Future might have been with a different lead actor. Just picture it, a Back to the Future without Michael J. Fox. Opening, how accurately did Back to the Future Part 2 predict the world of 2015? As we journey back to the cinematic world of 1989, we find ourselves in the enthralling sequel of Back to the Future. The film showcases an imaginative version of 2015, full of technological wonders and societal changes. But how well did its predictions align with our reality? Let's start with the flat screen TVs. The McFly family in 2015 is seen watching multiple channels at once on a wall-mounted television. Sounds familiar, right? That's because today we've got flat screens aplenty and a myriad of streaming platforms to choose from, allowing us to binge watch to our heart's content. Next, we have the concept of video conferencing. In the movie, Marty McFly uses this technology for a work call, something that would have seemed quite futuristic in the late 80s. Fast forward to the present day, video conferencing is a staple in our daily lives, thanks to platforms like Zoom and Skype. Now, let's talk about a prediction that was a delightful surprise. In Back to the Future Part 2, a holographic newsflash announces that the Chicago Cubs won the World Series. Interestingly, in the real world, the Cubs did win the World Series in 2016, just a year off from the movie's prediction. Not bad for a film that was made over three decades ago. However, it's worth noting that not all predictions hit the mark. For instance, we're yet to see flying cars zipping around in our skies, and we still have to manually lace up our footwear. Yes, Nike did release a limited edition self-lacing shoe as a nod to the film, but they're not quite the everyday norm we were hoping for. So while Back to the Future Part 2 didn't get everything right, it did a pretty impressive job of envisioning some aspects of the future. It serves as a testament to the power of imagination and the unpredictability of technological advancements. Closing. We're still waiting on those self-tying shoes though, so what are the most surprising facts we've discussed today about the Back to the Future series? Well, let's start with the original concept of the time machine. Can you believe it was originally supposed to be a refrigerator? Yes, a refrigerator. Although the DeLorean is now an iconic symbol of the series, the scriptwriters initially planned to use a fridge as the time-traveling device. This was later scrapped due to safety concerns. They didn't want children climbing into fridges, obviously. Then let's not forget the hoverboard. This futuristic device had us all wishing we could glide over the ground. Here's the catch though, it was all an illusion. The hoverboards were actually supported by wires and cranes creating the illusion of floating. The magic of movie making, right? Next, we talked about the casting change. Remember Eric Stoltz? He was originally cast as Marty McFly, but was replaced by Michael J. Fox after five weeks of shooting. The reasons were creative differences and the need for a different energy for the character. It's hard to imagine anyone else but Fox as McFly now, isn't it? And finally, we touched on the film's future predictions. While we might not have hoverboards or flying cars by 2023, the movie did predict video conferencing, biometric devices, and even drones. It's fascinating how a film made in the 80s could foresee some of the technological advancements we have today. So there you have it a quick recap of some of the most surprising facts about the Back to the Future series. From the original refrigerator time machine concept to the illusion of the hoverboard, the casting change from Stoltz to Fox, and the film's future predictions, we've journeyed through some intriguing aspects of this beloved trilogy. It's clear that Back to the Future is more than just a movie series, it's a fascinating